Hi, I'm Sharad Kutin and welcome to Let's Talk, the show that tries to bring you the most important conversations of the day. Today we're going to be looking at English literature as kind of a reflection of Malaysian society and uh, our relationship to this language that's been in the, this part of the world for over a hundred years. Uh, help me in this conversation, I have K.S. Maniam, who's a well-known novelist and academic. Uh, his first uh, novel, The Return, was published in 1981. Uh, he's also a recipient of several awards, including the Raja Rao Award in 2000 for his outstanding contribution to literature of the South Asian diaspora, because uh, someone of Indian descent. Uh, also with me, uh, Malakai Edwin Vedamani. He is a professor of modern English literature at the School of English at the University of Nottingham, Malaysia, a short story writer, poet, bibliographer, and critic. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here with me. Now, I kind of started out by saying I think there's something about the English language, and we fight about it, at least in the public sphere, quite a bit about its role or place and you know, what its relationship to the national language ought to be. But for you, Maniam, who've used English uh, as, as your expressive language in terms of the, the literatures you've uh, written, what does English mean to you? I mean, how do you kind of make sense of English in a Malaysian context your, your own particular identity, the identity of, the na uh, of you know, in terms of this is the, the nationalist rhetoric, how do you make sense of all that? Well, I think it has, a, I have to mention, a, a kind of personal history, you see. When I began uh, speaking in, in uh, when I went to school, they put me in Tamil school first, you see. I found it all very enclosed and dismal and whatnot. So I said, no, no, I'm not going to be here for long, I better, you better, uh, switch, switch me to an English school, which they did, my father did anyway, and I was grateful to him. And that sort of, that desire, you know, maybe subconscious, to go beyond one's own inherited or mother tongue and so on, must have uh, sort of um, come from a subconscious need to broaden rather than and expand and include the wider world than to be caught in one's language and in its world. Right, and you, where did you grow up, uh, Mani? I, I, I grew up in, in, in uh, Sungaptani Keda. So, uh, you know, they went to the, their premier school uh, nowadays, called <laughs> Prime, <laughs> Prime School. Right. Uh, it was very interesting because that trajectory, and you, and the, you know, the, you, you mentioned the fact that you yourself wanted to kind of broaden your horizons and English language yeah, yeah. and English language education was uh, the way that you saw uh, a, a way out of whatever you felt enclosed by. Uh, Edwin, what about you? I mean, what's your relationship to English? You're, you're slightly younger vintage than my name, <laughs> slightly, I'd yeah. say. I think we're all about, you know, the yeah. same. You know, I come from a Methodist tradition. So Methodist Tamil church, which was bilingual, both Tamil and English. and went to Methodist Boys Secondary School, again a very premier English medium school. So I, I think mine is an urban experience and uh, so very early I was exposed to reading the Bible in English, later reading, reading in English was the main stay for us because my father was a news vendor. We had all the newspapers in the house. We didn't read the Malay newspapers but we suddenly read the, you know, the English newspapers, the magazines. So very early in life, the introdu introduction to uh, literature. I remember going to British Council, which was in, uh, in Bukit Ahmad, going to the Lincoln Cultural mm -hmm. Center. So I think living in Brickfields and in Kuala Lumpur gave me access to English very early in life. And that kind of grew. Yeah. Right. I mean, uh, money for you, I guess, you know, um, straddling the kind of, you know, the independence era and, you know, coming from a, a more British orientated one. Um, and then the change in sort of emphasis uh, in terms of the country's desire to embrace Malay as a national language. Um, and then in what has been decades of ambivalence about English, right? Recognizing it as the language of commerce, of globalization, of knowledge, same time not wanting to sideline the national language and so on and so forth. I mean, um, was it difficult for you? I mean, I know that some people perhaps of your generation made the conscious choice to switch, like uh, Muhammad Haji Saleh, who you know, used to write in English mm. and then wrote and started writing in <coughs> Bahasa Malaysia. Uh, yourself, I mean, did you ever have those dilemmas? I, I don't think so, because my approach was rather personal in the sense that I, 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 I wanted to write in a language where 
I could be comfortable in, a language which would be flexible enough to do what I wanted it to do, and there was English for me. So, you know. What's interesting, what do you mean by flexibility? What is it that, uh, in, how would you describe the flexibility of a language? For example, I mean, if you take a, a short story called Radna Muni, which is in, in, written, and of course, in English, but when people read it, yeah, I'm not reading English, you know, I'm reading Tamil. So that's the kind of flexibility mm -hmm. I'm talking about because it, it can be, it can accept another layer of, uh, another, another layer of meaning from another language and uh, so I, and be very accommodative. See, that's what I meant. It, but isn't, uh, would that be true of other languages as well? I mean, the ability to, I mean, if the, the person writing so wanted it, yeah. to be accommodating, to in fact absorb, uh, if we look at the Malay language, it's replete with languages of the world. Yeah. I mean, from Persian to right. Hindi to whatever, right? But if you look at this idea of world Englishes and new Englishes, you find that every, I mean, English is then reworked to carry the burden of the new, the new users. So when I write, I'm sure there's a strong sense of Indianness as, as KSS does, and probably in different ways. Um, same as when you read uh, something from the Philippines, you can sense that there is a sense of Philippines. In it. The identity song does get transferred through the language, because the language as a medium very often carries our culture. Well, this is interesting because I come from sort of, in, sort of, mm. well, I mean, officially an Indian family, but I mean, we're so in some ways detribalized, <laughs> and you know, we're kind of, in many ways, have gone beyond the ethnic mm. identity. Mm. I mean, carry okay, very yeah. little of that in my in my DNA. I mean, do, do you see that as one of the potentials that, in fact, the English speaker becomes increasingly cosmopolitan, global, that's and indifferent to the, their origins? Uh, that's already happening, you know. They're, you know, you take pe people like entertainers like Russell Beatus, for example, he talks in a language which is, which is English, which is not uh, overly tinged by, you know, Sri Lankan or Tamil or anything like this. So he's take, he has taken it to another level. The, the, the kind of um, transition from English to Indian or Malaysian English is now wearing off and this other language much, uh, much more interesting and exciting because it allows you to be even more inventive. It's, it's, now, it's now the thing. Talk about it, uh, being inventive in the last minute before we go to a break. Um, what is, why, why English? Why short stories, poetry in English? Have you ever experimented with other languages? I can only function in English. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you really don't have a choice when that's your primary language. And no guilt about it? No, none whatsoever. Very happily writing in English because that, that's what I want to do and that's what allows me, the language that allows me to be creative in, in it. I think that's, that's how we see it. You don't, you don't see it as a colonial language or somebody else's language. It is my language. Uh, this whole idea of native speaker and all that rubbish that we hear these days doesn't really stand anymore because all of us ha have a right to the language as long as we are competent and we can be creative in it, I would say. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much for that statement of uh, affirmation for the English language. Okay, we'll take a short break and we'll be back. Stay tuned to Let's Talk.